uh, uh, Wendy and uh, David have given an excellent introduction about CIPA, so I can jump directly into my section, which is the encyclical part of CIPA. Uh, first, let's already, uh, briefly overview uh, what we want to do with the encyclical work. We want to develop an encyclical model of the adult human ventricular myocyte that can predict clinical risk of drug-induced torsor for use in regulatory decision-making. And uh, but we, uh, the ahor rudi model, which is one of the many models of human cardiomyocyte that's published, were identified as the golden standard for the adult human ventricular myocyte. Uh, this was decided back in 2013 when the panel of uh, experts uh, uh, met at FDA. The reason was that this model was built using essential experimental data from human hearts and it was calibrated using human myocyte industrial physiology versus many models published out there, they used animal data. And the key requirements for in silico model development include we need to keep it simple and all assumptions transparent, and we need to preserve an immediate and direct relationship to experimentally uh, verifiable data sets, and we need to make the model and the supporting data sets available as a community resource. Uh, there are many challenges uh, uh, associated with the model development for CIPA. The model should uh, reflect dynamic drug channel interactions when necessary, because more often than not, people will use a simple IC50 to represent uh, drug's potency on the channel. For some channels, that may be not uh, enough. And also, the, ch the model has to accommodate experimental data obtained at different temperatures and the manual versus automated uh, patch clamp systems. And the, the model needs to overcome differences between the behavior of native IKR channels in human myocytes versus the HERC channels expressed in vitro. Uh, the risk metric coming out of the model should be quantitative. It needs to be a continuous value, and it needs to be concentration dependent, and it has to be mechanistically relevant. And uh, very importantly, it has to distinguish three levels of TTP risk low, intermediate, and high as identified for the 12 CIPA training compounds, which I'll show later. So we took a stepwise approach to address these challenges. First, because a whole Rudy model operates at a physiological temperature, while industry generated HERC data are often obtained at room temperature, a dynamic temperature-dependent HERC model is required. And when we started this work, this, this kind of model is, does not exist. So we developed a modified HERC model that can reproduce temperature-dependent changes in major channel gating processes. And it was published this year. And then we compl we've complemented this model with the drug binding parts. Shown here is the, is the structure of the model. The left part is the channel gating uh, component uh, we just published. Here we use different states to represent different uh, channel protein conformations. C is the closed state, uh, O is the open state, and I is the inactivated state. And then we added three uh, drug binding uh, states. We assume drugs can bind to either O or IO state. Uh, the a key feature of this model is that it can capture dynamic drug herb interactions, especially uh, drug being trapped within the closed channel, the red arrows. Uh, this feature is uh, overlooked by many published HERC drug binding models. And we, we, use this, we use this novel modeling approach, and we found that many CEPA high TDP risk compounds tend to have higher probability of being trapped within this closed bound or trapped state. Again, this feature is being uh, missed by many published uh, models. So then we took this HERC drug uh, binding model and we integrated it into the Ohau Rudi cardiomyocyte model. And then, because this integration may disrupt the system behavior of this model, we refitted this, this uh, modified cardiomyocyte model to uh, human data to make sure that uh, this model can reproduce experimentally verified data on the steady state action potential duration, APD, or cy and cycle and CL relationship to make sure that our model is still reproducing human behavior, human myocyte behavior. And finally, we took this modified model when we started to search for a metric 
that can separate these three levels of uh, TTP risks. Here, shown here, is the uh, three, uh, the 12 CIPA trading compounds. Red ones are dangerous, blue ones are intermediate risk, green ones are uh, safe drugs. We, 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 we use the Herc dynamic parameters and IC50s for six other major ion channels, and then we simulated a uh, uh, action potential with a cycle length of 2,000 milliseconds, which means every two seconds the heart will beat once. This is to mimic a bradycardia situation because bradycardia is one of the TDP, uh, risks for TDP. And we found this metric called CQ inward or inward current change metric. You can see that it can separate the three uh, classes of uh, drugs in a dose dependent manner. And more importantly, three out of the four red drugs or dangerous drugs, they, they, they induce EAD labeled by the stars here. As Wendy put out earlier, EAD is a mechanistic, mechanistic precursor to torsar. This suggests that our, our metric uh, has a direct relationship with the uh, mechanisms behind torsar. So in summary, we develop a temperature dependent Herg model uh, and uh, inc uh, incorporated that into the whole Rudy model to re replicate a normal myocyte Electrophysiology and a dynamic drug block. And uh, model calibration was done using manual patch clamp data, and we will continue using automated patch clamp data uh, along with the development of data quality criteria to ensure model performance. And now, uh, uh, as I showed earlier, I, we found a very strong candidate, but we are, uh, candidate metrics will continue to be explored and the performance will be assessed using the independent set of CIPA compounds. And finally, a population modeling approach that captures intersubject and the experimental variability is also being considered. And this is in collaboration with Blanca Rodriguez group at Oxford. Uh, there are many people to, to thank, but I think we, we move on to the next presenter, Ksenia.